Good afternoon. My name is Trish Powers, and I am a registered nurse who works here in the operating room at Brigham Women's Hospital and chair of the Massachusetts Local Bargaining Unit of Massachusetts Nurses Association, National Nurses United. I am here today surrounded by a number of my colleagues at the hospital to speak on behalf of the 3,200 dedicated RNs here at the Brigham who give their heart and soul to the care of some of the state's most critically ill patients day in and day out. Before I begin, I want to make it clear that raising the concerns we are bringing to you today has nothing to do with our union or any dispute regarding our union contract. That contract is settled. We are here because of our legal and ethical responsibility as nurses to ensure the safety of our patients and to advocate for our patients when they are being placed in jeopardy. We are here today to alert the public about deteriorating patient care conditions and illegal practices by hospital management that are compromising our ability to provide safe care and close monitoring for the most critically ill patients at this level one trauma and transplant center. The press conference coincides with the launch of the effort today by nurses to leaflet patients and families entering the hospital to warn them about the conditions and the impact on their care. We have copies of those leaflets here from members of the media. We are doing this because the public needs to know that the health and safety of their loved ones is being placed in jeopardy here at Brigham Women's Hospital and it is being done in direct violation of a state law that is designed to ensure their safety. We want patients and families to know that they have the legal right to safe standard of care at this hospital and that they should not accept substandard care. This patient safety crisis comes at a time when the Brigham takes care of the state's most critically ill patients, as evidenced by the high number of specialized intensive care units in this facility. These units are designed to provide minute-by-minute -minute monitoring and cutting-edge treatments for highly unstable, critically ill patients who are recovering from serious traumatic injuries, cardiac and thoracic surgery, acute medical conditions, premature and vulnerable infants, and patients recovering from heart, lung, kidney, and even face transplants and bilateral arm transplants. The patients who come to the Brigham are not the patients seen at other community hospitals. These are the sickest of the sick, and when they are under our care, many are literally fighting for their life, and we are there to help them win that fight. To ensure the safety of critically ill patients, a new state law went into effect this month that mandates intensive care unit nurses can only be assigned one patient at a time. A nurse may care for a second patient only if the nurses on that unit have assessed that it is safe for both patients. We have a copy of that law available for members of the media. Unfortunately, in the wake of the law's passage and its call for closer monitoring of ICU patients, the administration of Brigham Women's Hospital decided in August to cut the number of ICU beds and staff at this facility, eliminating five beds from the burn trauma surgical unit and three beds from the thoracic intensive care unit. In addition, nurses in many of the hospital's intensive care units have seen managers force them to take a second and even a third patient in direct violation of the law in the hospital's own past practices. When nurses have too many patients, medical errors, complications, even medical deaths are more likely. Particularly for the highly vulnerable patients our ICU nurses take care of. But now critically ill patients who should have one-on-one -on -one attention are being forced to share their nurse with another unstable critically ill patient despite the strong objections by the nurses responsible for their care and their safety. Since the hospital has implemented the cuts to the ICU beds and increased nurses' patient assignments, nurses have filed a number of official reports where their patient care assignments jeopardize the safety of their patients. To understand how serious this issue is for our patients, you need to understand how sick these patients are and what it takes to keep them safe. We are talking about patients who may have just come out of major surgery. They may be intubated and connected to a ventilator to help them breathe. 
They may have numerous intravenous lines delivering highly sensitive medications into their bodies. They may be on dialysis and connected to several monitoring devices to track their heart, blood pressure, oxygen levels, brain function. And nurses are there to monitor and manage all of it. To interpret what the monitors are showing, to adjust the dosage of medications, to observe the patient's skin coloring, pupil dilation, urine flow, all manners of signs and symptoms that show how well the patient is recovering. And depending on what the nurses see, they are there to take immediate action that could prevent a patient from going into crisis. And in many cases, it can mean the difference between life and death. For years, our hospital has recognized the need for one nurse be totally devoted to the care of these patients. Now they want to divert nurses' attention away from these patients and hold them responsible for dividing their time among two of these very sick patients. It's a recipe for disaster, it is also against the law. Recently, nurses on the thoracic intensive care unit, which cares for patients undergoing lung transplants, reported being forced to care for two patients, including highly vulnerable lung transplant patients who should never share their nurse with another patient. One nurse reported a potentially delay in responding to an alarm connected to a ventilator to breathe for the patient because the nurse was in another room caring for another critically ill patient. In the care of these patients, every second counts. At a recent meeting with management, where we reviewed these reports and informed the hospital of their obligation to follow the new law, management flatly refused to heed our concerns or to follow the dictates of the new law. Because the regulations regarding compliance with the law are still in development, we have decided to go public with our concerns to pressure management to provide the care our patients deserve. It is important to understand that the reduction of the ICU beds and the increase in patient assignments in the ICU is having a ripple effect throughout this institution impacting the care and safety for patients in a number of other areas. The fewer ICU beds and staff to care for them, critically ill patients who should be in an ICU, are now cared by a single nurse who are being held in hours in the recovery room, our emergency room, other ICU ready patients in the emergency room where the nurse has two or three other patients under their care. Last week, the hospital was so busy, administration called a code amber, which meant there were no beds available and patients had to be diverted to other hospitals. In the past, a code amber was called only when there was an external or internal disaster. We had a code amber called when we had the Boston Marathon bombings and other disasters such as Hurricane Sandy. This code amber was called because there weren't enough ICU beds or ICU nurses to care for them. And this also mandated the nursing staff who had already worked a long shift to stay and could not leave or go home. In addition to cutting care in the ICU, the hospital has also decreased staff on its code team, eliminating a nurse from a group of specially trained staff who are on hand to respond to patient care emergencies. With the cuts in ICU staffing, it is more likely there will be situations where the code team is needed to revive a patient in crisis. Yet with fewer code nurses, it will take longer to respond to these emergencies. Now we have one nurse expected to cover at least three buildings and eight city blocks. And again, when a patient is in crisis and experiencing a cardiac arrest, every minute wasted can mean death for the patient. When the nurses questioned the decision, management stated that the cuts to the code team could save the hospital up to a half million dollars. Coincidentally, Brigham and Women's Hospital CEO Betsy Nabel has recently received a 26% raise of just that amount, a half million dollars. Why are the lives of our patients being pl placed in jeopardy to pad the bank account of our CEO? And why is Partners rewarding the chief executive who is breaking the law and degrading the care of our patients? At the same time, the hospital wants to force nurses on my unit the operating room, to leave the operating room and care for patients experiencing a stroke, an actively stroking patient, despite the fact that we are not qualified to provide that level of care. Nursing is as specialized as medicine. Operating room nurses should not be expected to provide care outside of our specialty. 
It is wrong and it is dangerous. Our administration is also proposing to do away with one-on-one -on -one sitters for patients who might, might be at high risk to fall, confused, sedated patients. Instead, they are proposing to have cameras in all these rooms connected to monitoring stations where someone could call into the room via a microphone to tell the patient to get into bed. Again, a confused patient will now hearing voices through a microphone. I am not making this up. And all of this is occurring while our hospital is preparing to deal with the prospect of providing care to a patient presenting with Ebola. As we have stated to the media previously, our administration has failed to provide us with an adequate plan or the proper equipment to care for a patient with this highly infectious and deadly disease to the 90% of the care given by staff nurses. The lack of ICU beds and staff we have described today will make it even harder to respond appropriately and it will most certainly result in further degradation of care for all other patients in the hospital. Put simply, since we are failing to provide appropriate care for our typical patient population, how in the world will we be able to maintain safe care in the wake of the Ebola patient? As we nurses, we provide 90% of the clinical care our patients receive. We have always been proud to be Brigham nurses because we could provide the high quality nursing care our patients needed. But now we are appalled at the leadership of Partners Healthcare, an organization that posted more than 600 million in profits last year and is spending millions of dollars in legal fees to win approval to expand their empire, has chosen to cut care to our patients and violate the law at the expense of our patients and the nurses' safety as well. We cannot and will not stand for these dangerous practices and we are here today to let our community and our patients know that we will be out here to educate them about these changes and to ask for their help in convincing our administration to follow the law and to ensure that their loved ones receive the care they deserve when it matters most. We are going public today because it is the public who has the most to lose if the current illegal practices are allowed to continue. We are here today because of our patients. This is truly a matter of life and death. We would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.